All right, welcome back to KPRC 2 Plus on this Monday. You know, not everybody's a fan of spiders. I appreciate them and Absolutely. the role they serve. Um, they can be amazing creatures. Yes, and with Rice University researchers, they can even be useful when they're dead. Huh. Engineers creating a necrobotic spider that can be used to grab objects. Yeah. To tell us all about the study, Assistant Professor Daniel Preston of Rice's George R. Brown School of Engineering and graduate students and the study's lead author, Faye Yap. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Okay, so we have to discuss this. How did you come up with this idea? Thanks, Andy. So this project started shortly after the lab was established. And while we were setting up our lab, we noticed the crowed out spider at the edge of a hallway. And that, that made us really curious and it led us to searching online. And we found that actually spiders do not have antagonistic muscle pairs. And instead they only have flexor muscles to contract their legs inward. And they rely on hydraulic pressure to extend their legs outward. And we thought that was really interesting. And we were thinking of a way to leverage that for a soft robotic application. My goodness, uh, Professor, which, uh, either of you, uh, why did you choose spiders in particular and how does the study exactly work? Break it down for us. So we were excited about this interesting hydraulic mechanism and there have been actually prior research focusing on bio-inspired systems where researchers look to nature for inspiration for engineered systems. And there's also biohybrid research where living materials are interfaced with artificial components. And for our work, we were able to use the biotic material, which is um, non-living, that can readily, readily function as a necrobotic gripper um, in our robotic system. You look at the, the size of a spider and you think, are, are there any limitations to the spider's strength? Um, so from our experiment, we showed that the necrobotic gripper is able to grip about 130 times its own, 130% its own mass, so 1.3 wow. times. And we show using a mathematical scaling analysis that smaller necrobotic grippers can actually hold objects with a mass much substantially greater than its own. They are incredible, incredible when you think about that. Daniel, what do you think about this research and how might it be used in the future? Yeah, we're really excited about trying to use this in the future. Uh, for example, for applications in scientific field work where we might want to obtain delicate or even living specimens, for example, collecting uh, insects or other bugs in the field while trying to make sure that we don't hurt them. And that's because of the intrinsic compliance of our fluidic uh, gripping mechanism with the necrobotic gripper. Uh, we're also looking forward to trying to independently control each leg individually, which we think might be able to let us study things like arachnid locomotion and better understand it. And Daniel, what is the biggest, the largest spider that you've worked with? So, so far, all the studies that we've done have focused on these wolf spiders uh, that we obtained from a biological materials company to keep things consistent. But we're interested in trying both smaller spiders, which we believe will perform better in terms of the gripping force to gripper weight ratio, as well as larger spiders, which may be able to traverse uh, distance more quickly if we try to move towards studies focused on locomotion. Well, that's, that's incredible. Faye, what's next here? So one thing that we were thinking of studying is to prolong the lifetime of these necrobotic grippers by using polymeric coating. So that will be one of our future steps. Uh, Daniel, are, are, are there any spiders that are, that are too small to work that just may not be necessarily good for what you're trying to do? Yeah, Andy, I think that uh, it gets to become a bit of a challenge at the really small length scales in terms of interfacing with their hydraulic system. So we have the inanimate spider that we start with as our source biotic material, and we have to tap into that internal hydraulic system. And in terms of doing that, as it gets smaller, it becomes challenging, but it doesn't become impossible. You think that uh, there are a lot of uh, approaches already out there for things like microelectronics and micro manipulation that we can use to make this hydraulic connection. So looking forward to trying that in some future work. Have either of you ever had a fear of spiders? <laughs> uh, they haven't always been my favorite creatures to be around, uh, especially around the house, but in the lab, your mind <laughs> kind of flips the switch and you're ready yeah. to get to business. Well, it, the work, it's incredible, just the, the study and the research that's 
going so into I all know, this. I know. And it's, you know. It's fascinating. And that video alone, my goodness, right? <laughs> no. We understand the whole lab versus in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, appreciation for <laughs> arachnids. Uh, thank you, Assistant Professor Daniel Preston of Rice University's George R. Brown School of Engineering, and of course, grad student Faye Yap, who's also the lead author of this amazing study. Thank you both for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you.